guys, my name is Devin Wynn. Welcome to 11% Tutorials. Today I'll be teaching you guys how you can create this glowing eyes effect used in a Young Bands music video by Cole Bennett. This is an older Lyrical Lemonade video, but I just remember seeing it and being like, wow, this is a really crazy effect. I would like to make that. It's a really fun and simple effect to recreate, and for this effect, all you'll be needing is After Effects, a pair of sunglasses, and some green paper. This effect requires a little bit of practicality and pre-production planning, but it's really simple to recreate. Before you get to shooting, make sure you have your sunglasses some green paper, some scissors and tape. Cut out green circular circles to cover the sunglasses shades and then tape them on. Once you have your green eyed sunglasses, make sure you find a location that doesn't have any green in the background and is very well lit and the green is very visible to the camera. Then you can go ahead and film your shots and then once you have your shots, you're ready to go ahead and jump into After Effects. But before you get started, if you guys are new to this channel, please make sure you like this video and subscribe. It's free, all this content is free, so it would really, really mean a lot if you guys could. Also, if you have any questions or concerns throughout the entirety of the video, please make Make sure to leave a comment down below. I'd love to see what you guys have to say and, and I'm always there to answer questions. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the tutorial. All right guys, so now that we are finally inside of After Effects, as you can see, uh, I have my clip myself here, you know, singing and dancing to the camera for some test footage. Test footage purposes only. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to our effects and presets and we are going to search up key light, okay? Now, once we have this key light effect, we're gonna take it over here and we're gonna drag it to the bottom layer right here. Now you can see we have this whole new options tab right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this eyedropper tool and select the green. Now key light usually does a great job of selecting the green, but if you still have some, some spots that are not selected or that you want to be fully green and selected, then you can come over here to screen matte, search over here in these, in these options and you can play and mess around with these settings. I might increase the clip black just to include more of the green. It just gives you more options to, to mess around and what is selected and what is not. Once you have a nice selection and if you play back your footage and you can see your eyes, your sunglasses or whatever subject that you're deciding to light up is all entirely black, then we can finally move on to the next step. First, what we do before we go on to adding the glow is we are going to add a background white layer. So we're gonna come over here to layer, we're gonna hit new and then we're gonna hit solid, okay? We're gonna hit this color icon and select white, hit okay, and then you could just name it white solid. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna drag it under our screen. And now you can see, boom, basic simple effect going on right here. We got some white eyes and pretty much gets the basis of this effect, but we're still not done yet. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to the top layer once again with the key light effect. And we are going to change this view from final result to screen map. Now you can see that just pretty much made everything look like it turned inverse. Everything that is selected is white and everything that not selected is black. And now it comes for the fun part of any editing project, masking, woohoo. But except this time, we are not gonna be masking it because the way that we're gonna select this is we are gonna have After Effects mask it. Now you see, it basically, if you have any subject in After Effects that's really harsh or just stand out, like we have these two black circular eyes right here, we can just have After Effects mask the entire thing itself. And we don't actually have to touch a single pen tool or mask. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we're selected on this layer once again, come here to layer and come all the way down here to auto trace. Make sure these settings are the same as mine, channel luminance, blur on, uh, pixels on one, and then we're just going to hit OK. Make sure you can copy the rest of these settings. Hit OK, and then this is just gonna take a while, so we're just gonna wait for it to load. And voila, as you can see, we have our subjects masked out here. Now you can see we have a variety of masks here. It looks like we got some stuff that shouldn't have been masked, and we got a, a, a giant orange mask around the entire border. But if you scroll through and you can see that there are at least, you know, one mask that remains solid on your eyes or your eyes are selected consistently all throughout the entire clip, then you should be pretty much good to go. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna delete all these extra unnecessary masks. Make sure you're selected on the clip, hit the drop down, and then we are going to make sure we select the masks that are not part of the eyes or subject that you're selecting. So I can see right here that it looks like this brown and pink mask pretty much cover the eyes for the entirety of the shot. So pretty much every mask that is not brown or pink, I'm going to delete. This big one on the sides, this orange one, this turquoise, brown, green, red, and yellow. We don't need them. Now, I'm just gonna go hit Command Z just to give you guys an example real quick. Everybody's masking situation is gonna be different. And for say, if you have a shot with you know different lighting or bad lighting, and it's just hard for After Effects to capture the exact subject that you're trying to mask out, what you may encounter is you might have, for say, a pink mask and a brown mask like this, but then at one point in the clip, the pink mask disappears and it turns into a red mask. 
or it turns into a yellow mask or a different mask. And then if you delete the other mask, it just leaves you with these, these gaps in the, in the masking and there's just these flickering shots. Basically, we don't want that. Pretty much for now, just make sure you have the masks that remain for the a majority of the shot. For say, mine's right here are the brown and pink ones. Just delete all the other ones. Don't even worry about those masks and the flickers and gaps in the mask because we will fix that all later, okay? So now that we have all the other masks deleted and we finally have our nice two masks right here, then we can come over here back to the screen mat and we can hit final result. Now you can see we have a nice little mask section over here. Next thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna come back up here to layer again. This layer key is a, is a big one throughout this entire effect. We're gonna hit new and hit solid, okay? Then we're gonna come over here, instead of having this a white solid, we're gonna change this to black. We're gonna hit okay and now we have a nice black solid. Now it comes in for our Saber plugin, okay? Saber is, as I mentioned, it's free plugin. It's linked down below if you haven't downloaded it already. And if you have any questions or any issues, please make sure to leave a comment down below. I'm always there to answer questions. Type in Saber and then we're gonna drag this to our black solid. Now you can see we have a lightsaber. Woohoo! What we're gonna do is you can just make sure it's on select or default. It doesn't really matter. And we can change this glow to white because, or whatever glow that you want your object to be. Now, before we move on with anything else in the saber, we're gonna come over here real quick back to the original shot right here. And we're gonna hit the drop down and come over here to the masks. Hit Command C, make sure you're selected on this entire mask tab. And then make sure your keyframe pointer is at the beginning of, of this clip and then come back over here to the top layer and hit command V to paste. Yeah, and you just command C or command whatever commands it is to copy and paste on your computer. And now you can see we have the mask pasted into this black layer. And you can see if we hit the drop down, we have a brown and pink mask and they have the exact same keyframes as the original. Now what we can do is we can come over here to customize core on the saber on the top black layer, make sure we're selecting on that. And instead core a saber, we're gonna hit layer masks. And now you can see, voila, we have our eyes linked to the lightsaber glow and they're nice and glowing. We're gonna mess around with the settings first before we move on. So obviously this depends on your shot, mess around to what makes it look nice. We're just gonna increase the glow intensity and bias just as long as we have a good enough glow. But remember, we have a white basis under these eyes so we don't have to have it entirely glowing white. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to come over here to the blending mode of this top black solid layer, and then we are going to hit add. And voila, we have our eyes glowing, ta-da! Now with these glow layers pasted, we can come over here and just delete these mask layers on the original clip because we just don't need them anymore. And like I said, as it depends on your settings and your footage, just come back over here to the glow settings if it's too much just increase and mess around until you get a good enough result. It's really just a fun effect and you know, just customize it, make it your own, own it. Now, before we move on, like I mentioned before, if you had any gaps or flickering spots or segments or frames where After Effects did not capture a mask, I'm just gonna create an artificial one here because I don't have any. For say this entire frame right here was just completely off over here and it just kind of creates this weird this weird one jump and there's just like a weird flicker obviously what you can do is just take this and just drag it back take the entire wherever that mask is because the thing is the mask doesn't disappear for the rest of the shot it just usually goes somewhere else because after effects mistracked it we're just gonna find the points usually it's clumped up together and like a little tiny group or for say whatsoever and then you can just take the entirety of that mask drag it over here and then you just remask it now it is a tedious process because you are gonna have to just you know remask however many frames got messed up but it really does help just give the best effects and helps you save on you know just preventing that flickering and fixing that overall mess now you can see we have a nice glowing eyes effect going on right here. But lastly, for the finishing touches, this effect, what makes this really cool is that it has this like shine outward. It's not just glowing, it's shining outward. And I think that's just something that really ties in the effect. We're gonna come back over here to our effects and presets for one last time. And we're gonna type in radial blur. Now what you're gonna wanna make sure you click on is you're gonna make sure you click on radial blur, not CC radial blur. This just works just because of the diagrams that it has. We're gonna take this drag it and drag it to the top black solid layer. Now you can see we have a nice little diagram of pretty much how this blur is gonna work. And if you increase the pointer, obviously the blur will increase. This is a radial spin blur. We kind of don't want that effect. We want the effect to go outwards. So if you come over here, there's an option for type and we can just change that from spin 
to zoom. And now you can see we have a nice little zoom effect that we can mess around with and just have fun with the uh, with the effect. We're going to increase this to a value to where we have you know a high enough glow that's coming outwards. And if you play back your clip, you can see we have a nice looking zoom blur. Now, one of the key things is, is that if the anchor point of the blur is just kind of off like this section, the glow looks like it's coming back. We just don't want it going that way. We can easily come over here to the center piece and just mess around with the center until we align it with um, the center of the sunglasses so that the glow is always coming out. Now, if your subject moves around a lot, we can just obviously keyframe the center point. And for say now it's over here and we want the blur to just, you know, follow the, the sunglasses and just be realistic. We can just adjust the keyframes accordingly. And obviously it doesn't have to be super accurate, but you know, the more you keyframe it, the more accurate and the more better the effect. Once you have everything keyframed, we are pretty much done. And here is the final effect. If you guys made it to the end of the tutorial, thank you again so much for watching. I hope at the end of this, you guys will be able to light up your eyes or any other subjects in your shots. If you haven't already, please make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and turn the notification bell on for tutorials like this. It really mean a lot to this channel if you guys could. Also, follow us on Instagram at 11%prod if you guys created anything cool with these effects or to suggest any future ideas or videos you'd like to see from us. Once again, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.